Well, good morning, everybody. How are you? I hope you're all enjoying my music. Um, something to kind of uh, keep your toes tapping this morning. Uh, let me just uh, pause the music here for a second, everybody. I apologize. It's great to see so many people on the call. Um, I'm waving. I know a lot of the cameras are off, um, but it's good to see so many people. Um, my name is Michael uh, Williams. For those who don't know me, I'm the president of Bridge Force, and this is my second webinar I'm doing uh, for Zoom, so that's fantastic. Um, thank you for being here this morning with me. I hope you're all doing well. And um, a couple of housekeeping things before we get going. Um, first of all, I have with me today Cassie. She'll be assisting me with this uh, webinar. So I think Cassie's waving there. Um, the meeting is being recorded. Okay, and I remember the last time I did a webinar, our Wi-Fi connection wasn't so good. We've actually upgraded our Wi-Fi in the office here in Mississauga, so I'm very confident that the recording will come out beautifully. And the notes that I'm gonna share with you today on the uh, webinar will be available for distribution, so we'll just send those out to everybody um, sometime uh, this week, okay? Um, your microphones are all muted, so um, if you want to ask a question, there's going to be lots of opportunity for questions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through certain sections of the presentation. I'm going to pause for questions. So if you want to ask a question, at the bottom of your screen there, you should be seeing a little chat button in the middle. You, you click on the chat button, you type your question to Cassie, and she will then be able to relay the questions on to me um, when the appropriate time comes. Okay, so um, we should wrap things up by about 11 o'clock. My presentation is actually no more than about 30 minutes, okay? So on that note, let me just get my PowerPoint set up. Give, give me one second here, everybody. Uh, let me just do this. Okay. All righty, so Cassie, can you see my screen okay? Perfect, all righty. Technology, everybody, give me a second here. I'm just uh, waiting for it to pop up here. There, 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 there. All right, so again, welcome. Today I'm gonna to share tips on how to use Zoom uh, for conducting effective virtual client meetings. Okay, so today, and Cassie, Cassie gave me this beautiful little clicker here. I've never used one before, so it's pretty cool. So today we're gonna to cover three things. Virtual tools that you require, uh, number two, creating the environment for a successful virtual client meeting. And the third, how to use Zoom in a virtual client meeting. And I'm actually gonna give you a demo, okay? And when I come to that point, I'm gonna pause my screen and then sit out at a, at a desk because you know, typically I don't do presentations standing up. All right, so, all right, here we go. So virtual tools required. Um, first of all, you need to have a virtual meeting platform such as Zoom. I use Zoom only because it's really intuitive, it's easy to use, um, it's, if you wanna buy a Zoom license for one individual, it's $200 a year, money well spent, okay? There are other platforms around, but I know Zoom is the most popular, and I just find it to be very user-friendly, and when I show you how easy it is, I hope you agree with me, all right? Second thing you'll need is a front-facing webcam. Now, most laptops come with a, face, uh, a front-facing webcam, actually both front and rear, uh, so that's what I'm using right now. I'm, I'm on my laptop using my, my camera on my laptop, all right? As I mentioned before, you need a strong internet connection, all right? Um, there are times when, depending on the area you, you live in, um, you know, the internet connection can be kind of sketchy. Uh, so, you know, just do your best to have a strong internet connection. There are times when I'm on the road, I use my actual cell phone as my hotspot to get internet because I just find that the Wi-Fi where I am is just too bad, okay? You're also gonna need um, good computer speakers, microphone. In my case today, I'm using a lapel microphone and I'm gonna show you what that looks like and good lighting, okay? And I'm, I'll share with you, uh, you know, um, what we're using here at the office when it comes to equipment. Um, as an option, you can also use um, this computer stylus pen, which comes with most laptops. This came into my Surface, okay? If you like writing on your computer screen, it's pretty cool. So if that's something you like to use, um, it's an optional uh, piece of equipment you can use, all right? So this is what I'm using right now, and hopefully the audio is coming in pretty good. Um, I learned from the last time that um, you know, the computer microphone was not picking up my voice that well, so now I use this uh, piece of device. I bought it from Amazon for $30, okay? And I find that uh, it works beautifully, 
okay? And there's the, um, the name and the model number, uh, but there, there are lots of other microphones out there. Um, choose the one that you like, that, that suits your needs, okay? For lighting, um, we purchased this product here. Now, a couple of things uh, just you know, to, to give you a heads up, and I'm just scrolling my sheet. I, I apologize for the Christmas picture. Um, we didn't know how to remove the Christmas picture. So anyway, the lighting is, is what you see there, and you can use it for your camera if you want. Um, but you have to have a couple of things. You have to have the, the housing to mount the, uh, the, the lighting on, so like a tripod. And you also have to purchase the, uh, the, the power accessory, okay? The, the, what I'm showing you now is just the lighting by itself, okay? So those are um, extra cost. And this unit cost about $60 on, 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 um, on Amazon, okay? So I'm gonna pause it there for a second, Cassie, and um, ask if there are any questions from anybody about equipment so far. At this time, we don't have any questions, but if we do, then I'll read them out later. Perfect. Thank you, Cassie. Okay, so moving on. So creating the environment for successful virtual meeting. Um, if there's one thing I would like you to remember today, it is this. Your computer screen is your virtual desk. Okay, your computer screen is your virtual desk. So please ensure that, the, that you only have items you wanna show your client open on your computer. All right, because when you start to share a screen like what I'm doing right now, and I'm gonna show you how to share a screen. If you had, say, a document or a website open that you didn't want the client to see and you accidentally shared that website, it could create some uh, embarrassment. So again, only have the documents that you want to show the clients open in your computer. Second thing is block or suppress all personal or business notification that comes to your computer, such as emails, no notification. You know, some, sometimes we have a little bell goes off when an email comes in, okay? Or sometimes the email comes across your screen to say, I got a new email. Or it could be uh, maybe a social media, like a Facebook notification, all right? So suppress all those things because when you're sharing your screen with a client, the last thing you want is, let's say your friend is sending you a Facebook notification or a message. And what if it was like, you know, something that wasn't appropriate? I don't know why that would be, but let's say it wasn't appropriate, you know, and it comes across the screen. Now the client sees it, could create some embarrassment. So again, your computer screen is your virtual desk. If a client came to your office, I'm pretty sure you would not have any confidential documents open or left out on your desk, okay? So please remember that point. Next thing is cell phone and silent. Now, um, I say silence, not vibrate, because again, if you put your cell phone and vibrate and somebody calls you during the meeting, it's gonna make a sound, which will distract the conversation which you have with your client. So put your cell phone on silent, all right? Again, this is pretty obvious, you know, um, set yourself up in a private and quiet meeting space uh, with a professional background or a virtual background. And I'm gonna share with you how easy it is to use Zoom to set up a virtual background, okay? Very, very simple, all right? So these are all basic, basic things, okay? Which most of you probably know already, okay? Your computer, um, sometimes we're on the go, we're on the rush, we've had many meetings and you may be on the road, okay? make sure your computer is charged, okay? Either plugged in or the battery's at 100% or it's at a, a level where you're not gonna run out of juice during your meeting because once that meeting, uh, once your computer dies, the meeting's over, okay? Whatever software that you are using, um, you know, make sure it's up to date. Now, if it's an e-app software, the insurance companies, they make sure that those are all up to date, but I don't know if you have a particular type, type of software you like to use for your clients. Um, just make sure that those are up to date, all right? And again, test your computer audio and video quality, and I'll show you how to do that again when I do the live Zoom presentation, all right? And again, check your webcam position. Now, right now, I have my um, laptop, you know, uh, mounted high to be level with my face as I do the presentation. When I'm finished this part of the presentation, I'm gonna sit down, and then I'll show you how I have my computer uh, set up and angled, okay? I do my best to, to have as full a front facial view as possible. I think sometimes some of you might have been on webinars where you're actually looking up at the person's face, right? which is not the best uh, way to present yourself to a client, okay? Um, I'm gonna pause there for a second, Cassie, and just see if anybody has any questions. Okay, we good? 
Perfect. We're all good. Um, this last point about dress for success. Again, you know, I've been on a couple of Zoom webinars being put on by insurance companies, and I was really, really surprised about how some of these wholesalers were dressed, okay? I know we're working from home, but it doesn't mean that you're gonna have a Zoom meeting and you're sitting in your, uh, your T-shirt, okay? Dress for success. The same way you would dress as if you're seeing the client face-to-face, -face, dress for success. So, you know, during this lockdown, um, I, every day I, I come to the office, uh, if I'm working from home, I dress for success. I put on um, professional uh, attire because I want to present myself in that fashion. Plus, it also puts me in that mental positive frame of mind that I'm ready for business, ready to work, okay? Now, 10 to 15 minutes before your virtual meeting, again, I want to emphasize this, okay? Ensure that all the documents that you want to share with your clients are open, okay, whether it be a website, whether it be a PDF, whether it be a brochure, you know, have, it, have them open. And then all the other documents you do not want to share, whether it be a website or, you know, whatever, close them, okay, close them. I cannot stress that anymore because you don't want to accidentally show a client a confidential document. So that's about 10 to 15 minutes before the virtual meeting. If it's your first virtual meeting, maybe just maybe rehearse your presentation, right? Um, it's, it's, you know, practice makes, uh, makes you, a, you know, a better presenter, all right? And then five minutes before the meeting, I start my virtual meeting. Like today, Cassie um, let you in five minutes before the meeting started, the music was playing. You can set whatever background you want. Okay, now I can show you how to share music also, all right? There's actually a prompt in Zoom where you can set a default so that it automatically pops up and reminds you to start your meeting five minutes before the meeting, which is pretty handy. That way, if you're busy and this prompt comes up, you go, oh yeah, yeah, my meeting, great, I'm ready to go, all right? Um, in terms of when the meeting starts, again, just like you would if you are seeing the client face-to-face, -face, you know, smile, greet the client the way you would as if, you know, you would, face to face, be yourself, okay? Don't try to pretend to be anybody else not because it's virtual, just be yourself, have fun, okay? Speak normally, and if for some reason, you know, if you're on the road and you're stopping at a coffee shop or a restaurant where, uh, you know, it's not an ideal situation, but, you know, you have to be on the meeting with your client, you know, uh, mute your microphone when the client is speaking because what happens is any background noise will interfere with the client's conversation okay so i'll show you how to do that also um, on the zoom presentation all right Dem uh, demo i'm sorry okay um, now when you start your meeting it's always good just to review with your client okay brief them on the process of the virtual meeting all right now um, when i have meetings i always have an agenda all right, uh, the agenda, it just keeps us on track. So, you know, review the instructions and or the agenda that you provided in the invitation. I'm actually gonna show you how to create an invitation and I actually have a sample invitation that I'm gonna show you, okay? But you can, again, modify it any way that you want it to, to work for you, all right? Um, check with the client, uh, their level of comfort with the virtual meeting. Um, I'm very confident that most people have been on some kind of a virtual meeting, uh, you know, whether it be calling family and friends and stuff, but just ask them, you know, hey, you know, is this your first virtual meeting? If it is, are you okay with doing it right now? And, you know, just ask them, all right? And again, most importantly, provide instructions if you lose your internet connection, because it does happen. It does happen, all right? So what I normally do is I'll say, okay, tell you what, if it's a one-on-one -on -one meeting, I'll say, you know what, John, Mary, I'm going to phone John on his cell phone. Or if, you know, I don't have the number, I'll say, uh, John, Mary, here is my cell phone number. If we lose internet connection, please call me and we can finish the meeting over the phone. Okay. Um, now, when you actually get into the presentation, again, use your own format, use your own style, be yourself. We cannot be anybody else. Okay. As if you're meeting face to face. Okay. You're just working virtually now. All right. So again, I like to show the agenda and I'll show you how to share screen, okay? Um, it's very easy, very simple. Review the agenda, make sure that they're okay with the agenda, okay? And then if you send, say, uh, a proposal that you want them to review prior to the meeting, right? Well, you know, 
um, pop that on the screen and go with that proposal with them or, or any other information that you want to share with them, okay? But most importantly, uh, be yourself. Don't try to be anybody else, okay? Fair enough? Okay, so Cassie, I'm going to pause it right there for a second and see if there are any questions from anybody. And if there's none, it means I'm doing a really, 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 really good job. So, yeah. Well, you are doing a good job, and there are no questions right now. Right. Everybody, everybody's being shy today. Okay. <laughs> All, right. All right. So um, next, um, what information should you include on your invitation to the client? All right. Like I said, these are just some basic things that I do. Um, you can, you know, modify it uh, and do what you want it that makes that that works for you. I always include a meeting agenda. Okay. Again, it just keeps things on track. As I mentioned before, any information that you want the client to review prior to your meeting, include that in the invitation. And again, I'll show you how to do that. Very easy, very simple, all right? Contact information, very important. Um, your cell phone, your email address. Again, you know, just in case you know, the client um, needs to call you because they're having trouble connecting to the meeting, they can phone you on your cell phone, so it's very important to have that in there, okay? Also, any documents that you, the client, that you need, need the client to have available, if you're, if you're gonna make a sale and you need to have ID, such as driver's license or any other kind of ID, then you know, ask them in the invitation to say, hey, John, Mary, can you please have your ID available when we complete the application, all right? And again, set expectations, right? What do I mean by that? Just you know, say, hey, we need about 30 minutes or maybe we need 30 to 60 minutes for the meeting. And just as a reminder, you know, when we uh, join the meeting, uh, try to be in a very, uh, in, a, in a space that's quiet and, you know, um, basically minimal uh, noise and distraction, okay? So those are the things you should include in your invitation. And I can, I'm pretty sure there's more, but this is just the basics, okay? So I'm gonna go on now to show you what an actual invitation looks like. And this is actually generated by Zoom, okay? And I'll show you how to do this. This is just my sample invitation. So, you know, hello, Mr. or Miss Client. I hope you and your family are all well. Here is your Zoom invitation. We will need approximately 30 to 60 minutes in order to complete the item for discussions or items for discussion um, on the attached agenda, okay? Uh, I've also attached information I'd like you to review prior to our meeting. Depending on your location during our meeting, can you please ensure the meeting space is free of any noise or distraction? And here's my cell phone number. In the event you have any issues logging into the meeting and you provide your cell phone number or email, whatever works for you, please call, my cell, call, please call me on my cell phone if you have any questions prior to our meeting, okay? And then to join the meeting, please click on the link that I've highlighted below. And that link that I've highlighted in green is actually generated automatically by Zoom and I will show you how that works, okay? And then you sign off, you know, all the best, or thank you, and then your name, all right? So Cassie, I'm gonna pause there for a second and see if anyone has any questions. I'm gonna take a drink of water, I'm sorry. I'm, I get thirsty when I talk. No questions yet, but please feel free to reach out on chat if you do have any. Okay, excellent. So, um, I'm gonna now give you a demo on how to use Zoom. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna just stop sharing. Give me a minute here. And I'm gonna put my computer on the desk so that I can share with you um, how I would present in a meeting. So bear with me one second here. You can see me moving around. I'm gonna set up my desk. Okay, there we go. Now, so what I do is when I sit, I do my best to have the camera as full front facing as possible, okay? Um, it's not like this, where you're looking up at, you know, you know under my, my nose, okay? You know, do your best to have it in a manner so that it is as upright as possible so that people, your clients can see you front on, okay? And I can see some of you right now um, that's on screen and, you know, uh, you have your camera set properly, okay? So, pardon me if I glance, I'm looking at my notes to make sure that I'm not missing anything that I wanna share with you. All right, so what I'm gonna go over is some basic functions of Zoom. Um, if there, as, as I go along, 
if there's any questions, please stop me, okay? I'm not gonna go fast, but I'm just going over some basic functions off Zoom. I'm gonna show you the control panel, how they work, what are their features, and that kind of stuff, okay? So let me now share my screen and you'll be able to see my control panel. So give me one second. All right. Now, can everybody see my control panel and you can see my mouse. So along here, if you see me moving my mouse, you should be able to see all the controls at the bottom of my computer. And, oh, let me show you one thing. If, I know you can't speak, but there's a reaction button. Give me a thumbs up. Everybody give me a thumbs up if you can see the controls at the bottom of my screen. All right, look at that. Woohoo! I love this thumbs up. Some people have asked me, can we add another symbol? I say, no, we can't add another symbol. Just, just a thumbs up or a clapping hands, okay? Keep it clean. <laughs> I'm sorry, I shouldn't say that. All right, so here are the basic functions on your Zoom platform. You got your microphone here. Now, I'm gonna click my microphone for a second to mute myself. And I have now unmuted myself, okay? There's a little arrow here that says up. I click it. And this is where it shows you here the different microphones I have. So I'm using my lapel microphone. It picked it up automatically. And the speakers. So if you want to use external speakers, you can do that, okay? But I'm using my computer speakers, all right? Remember I said to you, how do I test my audio system? So right here, test speaker and microphone, okay? Now, because I'm the host, I have all these features open. Because you're the guest, the only feature you'll see available is muting and unmuting your phone and maybe test your speakers, okay? So I'm gonna test my speaker. I click it. You hear the ringtone? Yes, I did, okay? Um, speak, and if I can see movement on the input, great, perfect, yes, done. Hey, it works, okay? And so if a client is having issues with their microphone, that's where you wanna point them to, all right? Cassie, I'm looking at Cassie. Sorry, when I looked to my left, I'm looking at Cassie, I apologize. Uh, so far, so good. Any chat questions? Okay, all righty. Um, moving on, this icon, your video. So again, pretty straightforward. If I click on the video, my camera gets turned off, which I won't do right now, all right? But more importantly is this little up arrow here. So I click it, and again, you can choose which camera you want. Obviously, I want the camera facing me. Remember I talked about creating virtual backgrounds. So um, I'm in the office right now, but if I didn't want to show the office, I can actually put up a virtual background. So I, I click on choose virtual background and it pops open this screen, right? And these first seven pictures come with the zoom. So I like this one here, you know, I click it and look, I'm on the beach. Isn't that beautiful? I love it. I love it. I wish I were there. Okay. Now, if you want to import your own pictures, you can do that. So I'm going to scroll down here and you see all these pictures here. Okay. So I'm going to change my background. This one here was a picture that my wife and I took when we we're in Egypt. Okay. Um, this was another one that we took when we were on a cruise and we're having a drink at that bar. All right. If you want to import your own picture, very easy to do. You see this little button right here, you click add. Um, I wouldn't recommend adding videos because it just chews up your bandwidth. So add image, I click on add image. It pops up whatever, wherever you, you save your documents. I wanna click this one on the golf course. I go open and I'm on the golf course. Isn't that cool? Give me a thumbs up if, I, if, if, if you like that. <laughs> nice, okay, lots of thumbs ups, okay, good. If I want to remove the, the background, all I do is go to here, none, and it goes away, all right? Um, and then I just click this off. So pretty cool. That's how you create your own virtual backgrounds. Very easy to do, all right? Now, um, some tips though, okay? Um, uh, I, would not, I would stay away from um, very light backgrounds because what happens is um, if it's too light, you may get some contrasting errors. And also make sure that, um, you know, if, you're, if your back is to a window and there's light coming in that window, uh, what happens is the virtual background won't work too well because the camera that is looking at me right now will not pick up the background too well. 
it, you need to have a fairly solid wall behind you. Okay, so I've seen people sitting in their kitchen and behind them are like, you know, um, you know, some kind of dinette set with, you know, or some, uh, a whole bunch of pictures and stuff. And what happens is the camera on your computer is having trouble picking up a solid background. So just be mindful of that. Okay. I'm going to move on now to this security button. I never use it. Okay. Because all my, when I set up my profile in zoom and so what happens is when you buy a zoom license for $200, okay. You set up a username and password. You go into your profile and you set up your settings. Okay. So my security settings are already all set. I know that initially when I started using zoom in March, people were saying, well, zoom is not secure. I can, I can guarantee you it's now zoom version um, uh, five and it is, Fully secure. I've actually run it by my IT person and they say, Michael, no issues. But also some of my settings that I set, uh, it encrypts the, the Zoom um, uh, meeting. So, so we're good to go. But if I click on the button, you know, um, uh, what you're seeing now seems like, you know, I can lock the meeting. Well, I don't want to lock the meeting, you know, um, because I just don't want to lock the meeting. I can enable waiting room. You know, just like when some of you logged in early, you're in a waiting room. I just find those things kind of a bit of a pain, but again, you know, you can set it up where you, the way you want it, but I never use this screen here. Okay. The next button is the participants button. So you notice when I clicked on that button, it popped open all this panel here that I can now see who is on the call. Okay. That's pretty cool, right? Here's why I'm showing you this because I'm the host. If I were to scroll over, I'm going to pick on my good friend here, Adrian Scott. Hey, Adrian, hope you're doing well, buddy. Give me a thumbs up. Yep. Adrian, are you there? That's how you know people are there, okay? He's there, perfect. So if I scroll over Adrian's name, it pops up these two boxes, ask to unmute if I want him to speak, right? Or if I go over more and click on it, I can ask him if his video is not on right now, I can ask him to start video, which I won't, okay? Or I can allow him to record, I can allow him to rename what the name I show, that shows up, or if I want, I can put him in a waiting room. I don't know why I want to do that. Or if Adrian's being a really bad boy, I can remove him from the meeting. Okay, so that's how, that's, that's why I want to show you these little things over here. Okay, so that's where you click on this participants button. I click on it again, it goes away. I click on it, it comes back. Now, suppose you're in a meeting with a client and they say, you know what? I, I, want, to, I want to have my accountant join me in this meeting, right? Well, okay, great. What, what do you do? See down here at the bottom here, it's got this little button that say invite. All right. I just click invite. And then these are some people that are in my content list, but I can go to my email and I pick my default email, whether I am on uh, Outlook or Gmail or Yahoo, you click it and then it pops up your email uh, contacts and you can add the, uh, the, the person's email address. Okay. But I won't do that right now, but that's just to keep, you know, keep you in the loop there. All right. Um, so I'm going to close that box there. Um, chat, as we said, if, if you, for some reason, you, know, you can't hear the client, they, you know, their video is not working, their audio is not working, but they can chat. Again, down here, you type in a message, hello, and then hit enter, and it goes off. Okay, but I'm going to turn that off for now. I'm going to get back to screen sharing, which is what I'm doing now, because this is probably... Uh, one of the most important features on the Zoom control panel, okay? Recording, this record button, I use it sometimes. Um, again, what I do here is if I click record, it gives me an option, do I wanna record the meeting? I can save it to my computer or my iCloud service, okay? Now, word of caution, you have to inform your clients or ask them permission to record the meeting, okay? Uh, if you're working um, and you, and, and you want to use this as maybe a compliance tool and the client gets permission to record the meeting, then great. Um, you may even maybe have that in the invitation to say, hey, you know, John and Mary, would you mind if we record the meeting just so that we have a video record if, in, in case there's any um, dispute or whatever, okay? I'm not sure you want to word it, but, um, you know, you can use it as a, as a, as a um, compliance feature, okay? But like I said, you must ask permission to record, okay? And of course, we all know the reaction button. I love this little button here. You know, I can clap or I can do the thumbs up. Okay. Now, I'm going to stop there for a second, Cassie. Pretty basic stuff. Uh, if, if, any, any questions so far? I do have one question. So Ryan Fleury asks, does the client see your screen in full contact list when you're inviting others? Um, 
the answer, well, so when I popped up the invite, let me go back to here, Ryan. So I'm gonna go here. The answer is I'm not sure. Okay, so I'm gonna click, because I'm sharing screen notes, I'm gonna click invite. I'm gonna click default email, okay. Um, and well, in this case, I can just type in the person's email address. It, it didn't even ask me for my contact list, okay. So I can just type in the invitation. If it's the accountant, okay. Uh, John and Mary, what's your accountant's name? I type it in, okay. So Ryan, hopefully that answers your question. I'm gonna close this off. Okay, we're good. All right, perfect. So share screen. This is a very, very important piece. As, as I mentioned, you know, um, you know I, can't, I cannot say any more about, you know, making sure that only the documents you wanna show your clients are open, okay? So share screen. I'm gonna stop sharing for, I'm gonna stop sharing for a little bit, okay? And um, so now you can't see my screen anymore, right? So um, let me start sharing one more time. And you can see at the bottom of my screen here that I have all these little buttons here, okay? And I like to have these buttons here on my, I, I'm running a Windows computer because I like to be able to see what's going on down here. So I've, got, I've only got things I want to have open that I wanna show the client, okay? So um, hopefully you can see my top screen here, okay? So this is all the controls for the sharing of screen. If I wanna pause sharing, and when I, when I hit pause, you, you got my screen's, your screen's gonna go blank, okay? So pause, pause screen, right? You can't say anything. I click resume screen, so, okay, boom, it comes back, okay? Might be a little bit delayed depending on the internet connection. If I wanna do a new share, so typically what I'll do, I'll pause, I'll go new share, and I'll pick up, say, um, this Word, a blank Word document, I'll go share. So now you're seeing a blank Word document, okay? Or it could be a document that you wanna talk with a client about, all right? Um, it's a possibility, all right? I'm gonna now um, go stop sharing, okay? And now that goes away, all right? Now, I'm also gonna show you one thing that's also very important is, let me just find my share screen again. At the top of my screen, there is this button called annotate, okay? Um, can everybody see that okay? Cassie, is that, is that showing up, the annotate button on my screen? Don't see, okay, all right. I wonder why, let me, let me stop sharing for a second, folks. Let me go back here and go here and share screen. Okay, ah, here we go. All right, so up here, can you see my, my panel now, Cassie? Okay, perfect. So this button called annotate. I love this button. I click it and all these little things come up, okay? The, the one that I use the most is this one here called Spotlight, okay? I like to use this little wand and you can see that little red button moving around, okay? Um, and I find that um, when I'm in a presentation and I wanna show my agenda, I just use that little button there and it shows the clients what I'm, what I'm looking at, okay? Versus using my mouse by itself, okay? I'm gonna go to this um, um, blank Word document. Cassie, can you see the Word document? Perfect, okay, so here I am. I can type, okay, hello, all right. I can um, draw, so let me show you. So for example, I wanna draw, I go here, and let's say I wanna draw arrows. Okay, well, there's my arrow, all right. If I don't like the way I draw my arrow, I can go to this little button here, clear all drawings, clear all drawings, goes away. All right, um, if for some reason I just wanna use my mouse, click my mouse, goes back to that. Um, if you wanna use a little stamp, right? I like, I like hearts, so okay, stamp, stamp, stamp. If you wanna remove the hearts, again, you can, you can undo, or you can redo, or you can clear, okay? Very cool button, this is how I like to, this is why I like to use this button here. Again, if you rather use your hand, I can actually you know, go check mark. Oops, let me see, sorry. Um, oh, I apologize, let me clear this off first. Okay, I wanna draw. Okay, let me see if I can use my finger. Uh, now, I, now I'm actually making more hearts, okay? Um, I'll use my mouse, go back here, and see what happens. So I think I need my, have my, my, sorry, I need to have my pen, I apologize, okay? So that's annotate. The, again, the most popular button I use is Spotlight, okay? But again, you play with it, see what works for you, and um, you know, just experiment. So, Cassie, uh, any questions so far before I go on to the next thing I wanna show? No questions at this time. 
this last time. Okay, good. Now, I talked about showing you how to set up an invitation. So I'm gonna go share screen. I'm gonna pick my screen. I wanna share, and I'm, I'm sharing with you a demo calendar that I use for um, uh, Microsoft Outlook. So I'm, I'm, in, I'm in Outlook, okay? I'm gonna move this out of the way here. Now, remember I said to you, um, up here, let me get my little annotate button here. Spotlight, boom, okay. See up here, it's got schedule a meeting, right? When you buy your license with Zoom and you log into your account, there are two add-ons. One is for uh, Microsoft Outlook, the other one is for Google Calendar, okay? Whatever calendar you're using, download it, and then what happens now is it places this schedule meeting button in my calendar. So if I hit schedule a meeting, here's what pops up. This little box pops up, okay? Um, I've got it already preset so that as soon as I go in, uh, the host, my video is on, and same for the participants, and I already uh, set up for um, uh, telephone or computer audio. There's also some advanced options, which I very rarely use, okay? But again, if you want to you know, have somebody wait in the meeting room, um, what happens now is that when you enable these features, the invitation goes out to the person, they will be in the waiting room, you have to admit them, okay? The only thing I really have on here is include the invite link in the location field, okay? That's all I do, all right? I'm good with that, I hit continue, and then it pops up this screen here, okay? Um, now, here's where you do, you, you do your modifications, right? So it's what I do. I'm gonna go here, and typically what I do is I'll just uh, go like this, Zoom meeting with John and Mary, okay? And then I'll go here, I'll type in their email address, okay? And then I set the time and the date. So for example, if I want it to be today, today's the date, great, boom. Time, I'm gonna make the time just so we can, I can show you for one o'clock and I'm gonna set it for half an hour, okay? Now, this is where you modify your invitation, all right? Um, first thing I do is all these phone numbers here are for the US, okay? There is a package available on Zoom where you can have phone numbers for Canada I wouldn't recommend getting it because it can get quite costly. Every time a client phones in, um, Zoom bills you for that phone time. I'd rather recommend that you use the, um, the computer audio video feature, okay? Oh, it didn't? Okay. Ah, okay, Cassie's saying to me it's not showing the pop-up. I apologize. I don't know why it doesn't show up, but um, um, there, is a, there, there is a way to, uh, uh, um, to, 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 to modify your settings, okay? But Cassie, can you see my screen now um, with the invitation? I'm, I'm looking at Cassie's screen. Oh, okay, I apologize. It's not showing my invitation. Ah, okay. So for some reason, it's not showing my invitation. Let me just go back here and let me pause share. Let me do a new share. And let me find my invitation. Ah, I apologize. I had to do a new share. So Cassie, you should now see invitation, right? Not yet. Uh, resume share. Perfect. That was user error, I apologize, okay? So, um, so this is what invitation looks like. I've typed in you know, the, the meeting name, okay? You can type in here, uh, let me get my little spotlight. You can type in here the person's email address, and then this is where you set your dates and times, okay? Um, now down here is where I've removed a whole bunch of phone numbers. Again, as I mentioned, um, you know, there was a package, uh, but I don't think it's worth it. Use your computer audio. Um, what I like to do is I like to take this here, I highlight it, and I like to make it bigger, okay? Just so that it's very visible to the client, and then I like to highlight it so they can see it, okay? Now up here, typically, I sometimes leave this in to say, Michael Williams is inviting you to schedule a meeting, or I can just delete it. And this is where I can now modify and say, you know, hello, John and Mary. You can tell typing is not my first um, um, uh, job. Uh, you know, here is the invitation, okay, for our meeting, okay? And again, you know, just, you know, do whatever you want. Type in whatever you want, okay? If you want to add an attachment, like, so you go to the insert, 
and up here, attach file. Like when you click on this, wherever you save your documents, it will go there to attach a file, okay? That's basically, you know, the two features I use all the time, okay? Now I'm gonna send this to myself just to show you how it works, okay? So I'm done with the invitation. I have all my, all my attachments there. I'm just gonna hit send, okay? So it's gonna go to myself. I've got, a, I've got the setting where, you know, it asks for um, spell check, okay? I'm just gonna ignore this, all right? So, so invitation goes off and it's doing its thing. Now, let me just, um, okay. Let me just go here and um, show you my screen again. So now you should always see my screen and can you see down here, there's the invitation I just sent, right? It's in my calendar. What, what happens if I wanna modify that? Well, you know, very simply, um, I just click on it, it opens it up and I can make, oh, let me just, uh, one second, let me, let me just uh, pause sharing, do a new share, find that calendar. So you gotta remember to always share and open a new screen, okay, which is good, uh, resume share. So there's the invitation I just sent a while ago. If I wanna modify it, I can, I can, you know, I can make changes, okay, right? Um, thanks, whatever, okay? And then I just hit send update, boom, and it goes to the client again, okay? Or uh, if you wanna add somebody else, you can add somebody else, uh, it's very, very simple. So let me go back here to share. So again, I'll go back to my calendar. And now you see my calendar there. What happens if I wanna delete the meeting or cancel the meeting? All I do is scroll my mouse over. I right click, oops, one second here. I right click, it pops up. Now I don't know if you can see the pop-up box, Cassie. Perfect, okay. Cancel the meeting. Hit cancel and I just hit now I gotta do pause, new share, share. Okay, now you're seeing my screen again. So it says here, can send cancellation, it's gone and done. And now when I go back to my screen to share with you, my calendar, and he's gone. Okay, so pretty simple. And what happens is whenever I cancel a, a meeting or reschedule a meeting, the client will get a, um, a, um, a message or email saying, hey, meeting's been rescheduled, cancel, whatever, okay? I'm gonna pause there for a second, Cassie, and I'm gonna ask if there's any questions. I do have one question. We've been asked, is the $200 version automatically the secure version or do we need to upgrade? Yeah, no, it comes, it, yeah, it, if, you, if, if, if it's the version five, it is the secure version. And, and what happens is when you subscribe, Zoom will always send you uh, a notification to say, hey, we have a new version, you know, 5.6 or whatever, please update your Zoom because they're always making improvements to the feature, okay? Um, the one last thing I wanna show you, uh, I don't know if some of you noticed, but um, every Friday night from eight o'clock till sometimes two or three in the morning, I'm on Zoom with a bunch of my friends and we're just having fun, having drinks, eating, playing music. And I wanna show you how to share music if that's something you wanna do. Just like when you logged in earlier to the meeting, you heard music playing, right? So I'm gonna show you. And, uh, oh, look at that, Shahila and Nad, like that, perfect. So I'm gonna go share screen and uh, hang on, whoa, whoa. I'm gonna do this, share, okay. So you can all see my screen, right? And you can all see my controls. So I'm gonna go um, pause, share, new share. And I have to do this now. I have to uh, advanced music. I don't know, did, did I see that Cassie? Did that come up? The, um, the, the no, they, they didn't see that, right? Let me stop sharing, let me do that again, sorry. Okay, so I'm gonna go share. Does that panel come up? Can you see my panel? No, I guess you can't. Interesting, interesting. All right, anyway. Um, so let me do this very, shit. I'm sorry, folks. I'm just trying to find a way to get this, this panel to pop up. One sec. All right, so you can see my screen again, right? All right, so I'm gonna go, um, there's a feature, when you go share screen, I'm gonna go new share. Does that show up, Cassie? 
Perfect, okay, you see up here, it says basic and advanced, right? So if for some reason you wanna, um, you click on here, music or computer sound only, you click it, you go share, and so now if I go to my iTunes, which is what I use, and I hit play, all right, so, um, so that, yeah, that's how you share music. I love it. I love it. And that's what, that's what we do. Okay. So I'm going to stop sharing there. So that's the basic functions of Zoom. Okay. There are other advanced functions. Some of them, a lot of them, I don't know because I just don't need to, to do them. Okay. But this is really all that you need to. Uh, to, to know about Zoom, okay? Um, setting up your profile is also very important because it gives you so many features, but one thing about Zoom is that they have lots of training videos, and so basically what happens is you just go into the training videos and try to find whatever it is that you wanna learn about, okay? Um, so, on that note, Cassie, is there any questions for me? There aren't any questions right now, but if anyone has any, please feel free to reach out by email and we'll get back to you. Okay. Perfect. All right. So um, that's the time that I've now spent with you. I want to thank everybody for their time, for joining me here today. Um, again, we're going we're gonna to distribute this recording and the notes that I showed you on the PowerPoint. And um, I want to wish everybody just have a wonderful, fantastic day. If you have any questions, send Cassie an email. I'll do my best to uh, get back to you. And again, have a wonderful day, everybody. All right. Take care and be safe. All the best. Thank you.